Hello again, it's Keystone, the optimistic quadriplegic, talking again about some more adaptive equipment that I have. Um, this is my walker, and I use, uh, I have um, extensions on it, on top of it, so that I can, the way I use it is I put my forearms in there, grasp onto those, hand, those handles, and that's what I use to walk, as opposed to I would normally see somebody grasp this lower part. Now we're working on being able to do that. Um, I don't have the arm strength to hold myself up like that, and I don't have the grip yet to, um, to be able to hang on to the walker like that. But uh, in therapy just last Friday, uh, they taped my hands up to that, well, yeah, with these uh, hand grips they have. And I was able to use a walker of that height. And I walked, it was like, you know, a little lap of the track there. But it was the furthest I had gone, so I'd say it's probably maybe 200 feet or something. So that was good. So I was, uh, so I'm learning how to do that. It's just a matter of strength. Now two things I don't have that we use that I don't have to show you is I have a software program called Dragon that I use on a, on a regular PC. And it's similar to like Siri, where I give voice commands, but I can move the cursor around the computer. Uh, if I get into an Excel spreadsheet or a Word spreadsheet, um, I can you know, dictate what I want in each cell. I can move around each of the cells, um, do the different functions, you know, like adding numbers, things like that. So that's pretty handy to have. And the other thing that we use that we have borrowed from uh, and Andy's in-laws is we have a portable ramp so that I can get into, uh, if I'm going to somebody's house, obviously they're not going to have a ramp for me to get in. So I can you know, use this portable ramp and it's real easy, real light, Sarah can carry it. And it just like unfolds like twice, I think, Sarah. And and then it's just, it's just like a regular ramp like you would see. And I can drive my uh, wheelchair right up there. We'll show them that when we show them how you get in the van. Okay, we'll show that in person later. Now, I've never really shown you how my wheelchair works. Um, I've got, there's a, the regular on-off button is up here, which I can use, that's fine. But they also, I've got a, a button over here that's a lot easier for me to hit. And... Um, what this does is it's got three different modes on it, two different sets of speeds, um, and each of those speeds has five different levels. So I can go 10 different speeds with this bad boy. Um, so, and then it moves. Uh, first thing it can do is I can raise up, and this is helpful when I am like, when we go to restaurants and I'm in this chair, I can't pull under a regular table. So we like to go in places where there's a high top table. And by using this, I can get right underneath there, no problem. And it works pretty good. But we've also got, when I first came home, um, Sarah had the wisdom to buy a high top dinner table. So I can pull right up underneath there. Uh, I don't have to worry about like a regular uh, table would be. Now, um, what else this does is I can lift my feet up. And that is more to prevent swelling of my feet. Um, so they're not always down in that position. So I can raise them a little bit, get some of the blood from out of there. It goes quite a bit higher than that. Uh, I think I could go and stick my legs straight out if we wanted to do that. You also notice maybe the the padding on my foot plates, um, the kind of like bubble wrap. And the reason for that is I was getting pressure sores on my bottom of my feet and through another, for another reason, but this was just another way to, to prevent those from happening. Normally you see like a, a hard metal plate. Now, another thing I can do is I can tip back like this. So the whole chair is going back and I can go quite far back. Now the reason 
for this is to relieve pressure sores on, on my butt and my thighs and, and anything that touches the chair just to have a different spot that's carrying the weight. Um, it's a little bit less important now as um, my body is getting used to it, but I still use it. But when I was first, uh, first got a wheelchair at the rehab hospital, I had a stopwatch and every 15 minutes, I had to tip back, stop whatever we were doing, even if it was therapy, and I had to tip back because um, they are so afraid of pressure sores, um, and rightfully so. You get one of those and they kind of fester and you have to, you can't really do anything until they heal, which could take, you know, four weeks and you don't want to get knocked out for that long. And finally, the last thing that this baby does is just the back leans all the way back. So I guess theoretically I could sleep on this, um, but really I only use this for like doctor's appointments. When my physiatrist needs to examine my pump or refill my pump, it's easy for her if I can tip back like this and she can get to it. And um, so that's, that's really the only reason I use that. I use, I, there's a headrest for this, but I never really use it. Um, it seems to get in the way more than it helps. And, um, but if I did use it, I suppose I could tilt all the way back and take a nap. Now, what you see in front of me here is not normally part of the wheelchair, but it's a table and it just slides right into these slots here. And it's very handy for me for, I can have my phone or my iPad, or I can take a meal off of here, I can eat off of here. Um, so it's pretty nice to have, uh, you know, read a magazine, whatever, whatever you normally use. Now, I do have some things that I use on my legs, and uh, this is the first one. This is called an AFO, and it stands for ankle, foot, orthotics. Now, this is an older, this is one I don't use anymore. Um, how this worked was I would just put my foot right inside the, this plastic thing. And uh, what it does, and then you put a shoe, you, and, you, know, you put this inside of the shoe. But what it helps me do is for walking. And it keeps my knee from hyperextending, um, helps with my ankle, stability of my ankle things like that. So I just put that on and a couple of Velcro strips. But the problem with it, and maybe you can see some padding that's in there, is I was getting sores. How about those pressure sores? I was getting under my pinky toe. Um, apparently I have no fat there. Um, so it's just skin and then bone. And so any kind of weight on that was causing a pressure sore. And if that happened, uh, I couldn't walk for weeks at a time. So what we did was we went to this old 1957 model that I know looks terrible. Uh, I think it's the kind that Forrest Gump ran out of. Um, but it works for me. And the reason it works for me is uh, it's a nice, softer tennis shoe. And there's an orthotic in there, which is kind of, orthotic is kind of a pad. And it's got a little divot cut out where I was getting my sores. And so uh, the orthotics uh, gentleman I saw thought this was the best way to go. He knows it's ugly looking and, uh, you know, not very modern, but it does its job. So it's the same kind of thing. It just wraps around here. I only wear it for walking and I wear it for the same reason. But we are talking about perhaps getting back into a more modern looking one. Now this snazzy beauty here, uh, I don't know if you can see the colors, um, but look at that nice orange and yellow. Um, this is not for walking. This is for training my feet to not to turn out. And part of my problem too also is if I'm walking and um, I'm getting a sore on the outside of my foot, it's, it certainly doesn't help if my foot turns to the side, which is what was happening. 
So I wear these for probably four to six hours a day and it helps train my muscle to bend back in so that I'm putting more weight on the big toe side of my foot. And uh, can't walk in them, but um, I just sit in my chair and I wear those. And that is pretty much what I need for my lower body. And uh, uh, that's all I've got for now. And again, uh, this is the Optimistic Quadriplegic Keystone. Please keep watching and uh, thank you very much for your time.